down the field at the end. You know, we had busting assignments and, and, and a couple, two or three other things from our real young transfer receivers who were still trying to learn the offense kind of stuff. So, you know, it was not quite the situation that we had. Say, for instance, at the end of the Alabama State game this spring, we had uh, uh, Shaq and, and, uh, and a couple of those guys that were um, Wolverine, just, it'd be just trying to remember a guy who got us down the field and got us, you know, into a situation where we could drive the ball down the field in the almost the exact same situation. Whereas in this game, we did play Shaq in one play because he just kind of got on the field one time, but we didn't have quite the bodies in place. So, you know, whether or not we'll have the receivers that I want to have because we got another couple guys that are. Slightly damaged at this point too. I don't know what we're gonna to have to put together to be able to play these guys in. So then the bigger question is then for Corey Fields. I know throughout camp you were kind of always joking like you're beating him up mentally. You're hard on him because you want him to be yeah. that great guy. He puts on a you know he, he's solid efficient in game one. Mm -hmm. This this could be a confidence beater if you don't handle it right. So how yeah. do you handle Fields this week going into the game to yeah. make sure he doesn't lose his his confidence in himself. This seems like a different yeah. type of approach this week. You know, now that you frame that in a way where I got a got a better understanding of myself. <laughs> 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 you know, I gotta be careful with this deal with him and make sure that he has an opportunity to come out of this thing alive and ticking, you know, that kind of way. So you know, we'll work at it. You know, I can tell you one thing for sure and that is that Core is a real strong, mature human being. So, you know, that part, you know, you can kind of have to depend on him to handle a good bit of it himself. Now, you know, in a situation where, you know, you're talking about a, a lot of people that are really, really good in front of a lot of people, you know, because of the atmosphere and the noise and all that kind of stuff, you know, you got all the different kinds of possible scenarios that could make you really come apart at the seams. But I think Core is built to deal with these kinds of circumstances. So. He'll be all right, and uh, we'll get a guy or two out there that can, you know, be in the right places where he can find them and kind of, you know, do some of that kind of stuff. And, you know, more than anything else, you know, and Clemson's defensive front is magnificent. But, you know what, you know, our young offensive line we think is pretty good, too. And I'm excited about having them, you know, have an opportunity to really go out and match with these guys. So, um, you know, we'll protect court. We'll find a way to keep him from getting after him every snap. Give him a chance to throw it around a little bit. All right. I think I'm well, I have one more question then. We've talked so much about the game and, and you know, how difficult it's going to be and how you're going to handle the guys. Just from a fun experience standpoint, what do you want the guys to take away from a trip like this? Yeah. It's not often you get to go play in front of 80,000. Yeah. It's an enjoyable experience. I, mean, I try to make sure that all of our young kids, you know, all of our freshmen, you know, that we just signed, you know, get a chance to make the trip and that kind of stuff. So it's a, you know, it's a good experience for all of us in a way where we try to make sure that we maximize all of the different kinds of things we can do. You know, we go stay in a real nice hotel. We stay in the hotel that all other teams stay in, you know, when they play at Clemson. And then we go down and, you know, they get a chance to see all of the pomp and circumstance of the whole deal, the, 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 the uh, uh, police escorts and all that kind of stuff. You know, they take us from the hotel all the way in there. I think we leave about 45 minutes. It's probably about a 45 minute ride if you don't stop once between the hotel and the uh, and the stadium. And it'll take us 45 minutes to get there. You know, that kind of deal because those guys do a great job. The South Carolina State, State Highway Patrol, you know, and all the other different kind of folks that they have involved. You know, stop traffic everywhere as we go along the road and that kind of stuff. So it's fun to see all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's just a nice, you know, occasion where, you know, you get a chance to see the inner work and, the, the, you know, see the guts of exactly what goes on in a big time, you know, college football atmosphere that way. So, you know, it's an opportunity that a lot of people will never have in their whole lifetime. And, uh, you know, our guys get that experience. So, you know, I, I take a lot of pledge in making sure that they get a chance to take it all in. And, yeah, go ahead. All right. And, like, just how much have you missed that? Because obviously last year, you know, you guys didn't have a season in the yeah. fall, and then the springtime, you know, COVID kind of prevented you guys from really listen, seeing listen, How much has everybody missed that? Even the teams that had those kinds of possibilities didn't do it at that time because of the fact that they were, 
you know, much smaller crowds. Everything was limited. You know, all of the different kinds of situations were different. So, you know, I think we all have missed it. And, uh, you know, everybody's excited now to look in the stands and see the full packed stadiums again and, and all the different kinds of stuff. Now, the fact that we've got this, you know, new strain going around, this new variant, this Delta variant going around right now, you know, lends us to think that, you know, are we being wise about exactly how we're handling ourselves given the circumstances that way? So there's a little bit of, you know, intrepidation about the fact that, you know, we might be, you know, maybe not being so smart about this deal at this time. So I'm a little bit concerned by it all, but at the same time, I'm excited by it too. So, you know, we do what we're told and, uh, you know, at the point when, you know, we get to the end of this deal, you know, we go back and figure out whether we, you know, we're wise or not. And my final question, just what's your relationship like with Dabo after all these years? Good. You, got, you know what? And, and uh, you know, they've got several guys that my son was there until about a year or so ago. He's now working for the NCAA, but, um, you know, I had, you know, great uh, relationships with, with everybody. Tony Elliott was, was, is there. He started, you know, his coaching career here with us. Um, Dan Radakovich was, our, was one of our assistant ADs in South Carolina when I was there. And uh, all those guys are still really good, too. Dan's coming down to speak for our touchdown club this year. You know, at some point, I, f I forgot exactly when, but those guys still support us and do things to help, you know, the Orangeburg area in all kinds of different ways. So, you know, we appreciate them, and they do everything they can to, do, you know, to do things to help us. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, okay. nice Coach. Coach, real quick. Interesting. I, you talk about the experience that these kids get seeing the FBS programs. Mm -hmm. With the transfer rules the way they are, a lot of FCS coaches are kind of canceling these games thinking yeah. they're auditions yeah. for maybe opening yeah. up the recruiting again. Yeah. What do you feel about that? Yeah, well, that's a concern, but at the same time, if you treat your guys right at the places that you got them at, you know, then you'll be all right. You know, you, you, you'll continue to keep your guys. And if, and if a guy is good enough to transfer and go to one of those places, you know, we got a guy, Javon Hogg, Rod Perry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rod Perry, who's a good uh, defensive tackle who left us a year back now, I guess maybe, yeah, last fall this time. Mm -hmm. And he's at Illinois he's now playing stock for him in the defensive front. And, uh, you know, it was not necessarily that he wanted to leave us to go there, but because they were playing and we weren't. Now, after he got there, the Big Ten decided, you know what, we think we might cancel our season too. but. Eventually they did play, and then after that, and he was given that year again, so he's still playing then. So you get some of that kind of stuff, but in most cases, most of our guys, they're happy here. You know, we treat them good. We do what we can. I, I, there are a couple things that I'd like to be able to do for our guys that we can't. I don't necessarily want to get into here, but at the same time, you know, we do do the very best we can to treat them good while they're here. Awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks, All right. Coach. Thanks, Coach. All right, gentlemen, I appreciate it.